a little sorry, I ease myself into the day to avoid another flare-up, like those arguments we had left over from the night before that could send me flying out of my skin, comes out in bursts now, which I calm down with a little sorry, but not too much. It's my life, my body, to do with as I wish, but a little sorry that I pretended everything is fine, pushed past through angry words you no longer can speak. I heard from every joint and nerve as I ran down the stairs to do what I always do. Only nothing is as it always is. You and my younger self remind me. The shifting ground. After my college boyfriend joined the Open Road Club, on a day he and a few others picked me up in a hearse they rented to carry their hiking gear, my mother's expression emitting seismic shock waves that drove me rushing us out fast as I could, never thought that I, who just went along for the ride, or because I was crazy in love and didn't want him alone with another female, doing what I wasn't ready for, that one day, from a height of several decades, I'd be looking down at a fractured fault line running through my life, hear a gravelly sound struggling to get back to where it had been, and I no longer could hear what I took for granted then. to have and to have not years reminded me of that time I smoked cigarettes and tried to sound like the call walked around the house repeating you know how to whistle don't you <laughs> to a bogart I've yet to meet wanted nothing more than to sound like her on a Broadway stage as I listened to old audio tapes of myself and try to yank my voice out of whatever morass it has gotten stuck in over the years, wanting nothing more now than to sound like that woman in those tapes. <laughs> this is the chapbook Phil was talking about. It's a dance around the cauldron, beautifully illustrated by Donna Joy Kerness. And she did the cover art and all the drawings inside. And it takes place, um, it deals with nine characters and a group of anonymous villages from Salem, Massachusetts during the witch trials in 1692 to 3, whom I bring into modern times. What I'm going to try to do is read sections from a few of the characters. Um, 400 years is next door, across the street, the place where you live and work. It is the distance between one neighbor and another. The village was called Salem then. Its villages walk among us. They act like us. We do not recognize them. We prefer not to. And the first character meet, we meet is Tituba. We first meet her in Salem. She is a foreigner. It doesn't matter from where only that it's a very different place from where you live. She speaks another language, dresses differently from you, and goes to a different house of worship, or none at all. Some said she prayed to the devil. Because we do not understand what she says, we believe that she is scheming with others like her to do us harm. A chorus of voices point at her, scared, she points back at them, at us. So I confessed. They kept asking what wasn't asking, but wanting to know when I worked with the devil. And I kept saying, no, I didn't work with the devil. And because I don't speak their language, they misunderstood me when I said I didn't want to work for him, meaning Mr. Paris but the pronouns got confused and they thought I meant the devil until I didn't know what I meant or was saying except I didn't want to be whipped and hanged. So I told them what they wanted to hear 
even gave them names when they asked who was with me. And that's um, Tichuba. And she's like the person um, who confesses under pressure in prison, um, someone who will say anything to be relieved of the intense pressure from the police. The next character is um, Abigail. A rumor twists and turns with the weather, winds down an imaginary road to a brothel, a red light street a few centuries from where I lived in Salem. My name is Abigail. Don't believe what you hear. Nobody vanishes, dies. Not really. I live next door to you, work in the same place, go to the same house of worship. They called me a witch then. A word is like a drug, can make someone do terrible things to people they wouldn't do otherwise. Gave me the power to hurt people. Being needy does that too. I was bad for a time, did bad things to those I didn't like. Said I saw people flying to get back at someone. Said I could fly. I wasn't lying then, I was hurt. What goes past skin doesn't always show up on skin. A few centuries later, I flew, flew for real. They said it was the drugs. The streets and cafes of Greenwich Village, Woodstock, and Haight-Ashbury were my forests later. Flowers spring from my breasts, eyes, ears, every place propped to cultivate it, planted seeds which grew and never learn to ungrow back. <laughs> the next character is Proctor's wife, whom she'd like to get rid of. I am the woman who wakes up for her husband to come home and pretends to be asleep, has headaches, is sickly. He comes home later and later with excuses I pretend to buy till I can't. My husband won't believe me if I tell him, so I keep it to myself. The sun is always gray now, gray like ashes. I can smell it and think of the cauldron in that forest, fire leaping out, a woman dancing he invites into his heart. Once, just once, he admitted it. Her name was Abigail then. Um, is Anne Putnam. A lightning strike curse finds me four centuries later in New York City cradling another dead child. My name was Anne Putnam. My name is Joan. My name is Susan. My name is Alice. My name is yours. It's someone's you know. Each time I watched my belly grow, each time I caught a woman who reminded me of her, one called Abigail, staring intently at my belly. I watched her fingers move around an invisible thread as if she were knitting, felt each imaginary stitch strangling a child in my womb. I heard my mother's words, may you have a child just like you, twisting in my head. Call it by whatever name you want, only don't tell me it wasn't the devil who killed my babies. Someone is to blame. Someone is the murderer. Mary Warren. You've all heard about me, Mary Warren, from Salem, the girl who worked for John Proctor who kept changing her story. Remember? What does, what does a name mean anyway? I'm also the girl you met in grade school, one who didn't have an apple for the teacher attitude, always being punished for something, not like the goodies and their immaculately ironed clothes who never got a spot of dirt on them or ever were in a spot of trouble. Everyone knows about that other business now, so I won't go into it. I'm not a bad person, really. Strange things started happening, and I saw things I didn't see. 
Everyone fed the teacher, the babysitter. Someone did this or that, till I saw it too. I needed to belong, to be part of the group, part of something that was important. It was like a mental cataract I couldn't see past. I also feared retaliation if I said the opposite. Everything became a sign which hangs in the air. It is unspoken now. And I'll read one more section from this, um, which is the anonymous villages. <clears throat> we are the ones who didn't make it into names, those who stood by frightened when the rumors came our way. It was like an ill wind we tried to hide from, go about the usual business of our lives. The land still had to be tilled, Farms maintained, children fed, one day following the next, one season after the other. The rumors gathered force, came closer, interrupted prayer services, <coughs> stories we read to our children. Couldn't be true, someone said, when a familiar name was mentioned. Could it? Not her. There was talk. At first, no one believed. I mean, it was just a bunch of kids, right? The judges, minister, governor wouldn't allow things like that to happen, would they? We are the same villagers who woke up one morning in 2017 and asked what happened. I'm going to finish up with three poems. I have copies of this that I'm selling. Um, if anyone's interested, they're $10 each. <clears throat> and what didn't happen but could have did. As soon as I turned around, heard John Hammond stringing his 50s blues around a large crowd, and off in the distance glimpsed a piece of street as through a broken wall in a war zone, a van racing out, barreling through, which the musician's 19-year-old voice quickly annihilated in his 55 Ford. Performing triage transported me around the country, America's wide open promise. For a chance to play the harmonica, he drove musicians to their various gigs, and my wish-driven self to a simpler time. I forgot to look up, see a missile shooting out of Russia, driving school kids beneath desks, food frantically stored in underground shelters, and recall how my father, who worked in a grocery store, brought home cans of food my mother piled in the closet till there was no more room, and someone imagined hearing the siren's all clear cry. On seeing the Georgia O'Keeffe exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum, a curse she called that door stuck in a crumbling adobe wall, even bought the house to get it, and still, not my problem, and I didn't come here to hit a wall, but I did. Tried to get past what the men, as she called them, said she painted, the men who saw vaginas everywhere, Lies, they said, of her oriental poppies, calla lilies, red canna, I tried to dismiss. But in a black flower I'd never seen before, an eternal flame burned at its core. A flower I kept staring at, black as the door she struggled for years to take off the wall. <laughs> <laughs>